Hello, everyone. So my name is Julia, and uh, welcome to our first webinar on getting started with the Live Ops platform Balancy. We've created this platform to help game developers deliver Live Ops content much faster, experiment more with monetization, and hence grow LTV. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge the interest we've received lately, particularly following uh, our articles on VentureBeat and Pocket Gamer Bees. Uh, so it's a clear signal that uh, there is a lot of curiosity and excitement going on around the platform. And I think this webinar is very timely in that sense for showcasing the platform in action for those of you who are curious about it uh, and who want to learn more. So uh, throughout the session, we will uh, guide you through the most essential steps of starting with the platform, from creating your account and balancing to uploading game content, uh, creating game configs, and we will even launch an A-B test for different game settings. But what makes this webinar truly unique and special is the opportunity to engage directly uh, with the minds behind balancing. Uh, you will have the chance to ask questions to uh, our founder and CEO, Pavel Ignatov, uh, and to our LiveOps expert, Mike Ripin. Uh, so, Pavel, I know that many people are curious. Uh, how did you come up in general with the idea of uh, creating a LiveOps platform? Oh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pavel. Yuda, thank you for the introduction, first of all. Uh, it was a very long journey myself. I was uh, a gaming enthusiast all my life. I wanted to make games since childhood, I would say. And this idea was born after I, I would say, successfully closed my first startup. Uh, we were making video games. And uh, one of the reasons why I believe uh, that we had to shut down the games uh, was uh, the lack of expertise and technology in terms of live iterations and monetization. We were building. Uh, game as a service it's mobile, mobile it was mobile genre game for mobile and pc uh we were trying to compete with league of legends but there was no league of legends yet on mobile at the time so we had uh, our chances uh instead of making the game better we had to spend a lot of time developing some internal tools to run live services similar to what balance does but it was on totally another level like balance is way 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 much better basically. And uh, instead of, uh, since uh, we had very short, we were very short on the budget and time and everything uh, while making the game, I wish we had a tool such as Balancy to help us to get to the market faster and iterate faster and improve all our metrics starting from monetization. Mm -hmm. So basically you want to use your experience of running a game, of launching the game and help other promising game developers to uh, start faster, avoid mistakes, and really make miracles with monetization. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, that initially it was product for myself and my team. Basically, we were making it for a, like an internal tool. Uh, we wanted to build games on the top of Balancy once we finish it. But accidentally, we started successfully selling it uh, to friends first of all, uh, and then we see we saw the that market needs such a solution. And we decided to focus in full time. So now we're not making games anymore. Uh, we help thousands of other games to become better. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Mike, I have a question for you too. Uh, could you please share a little bit about your background in, li uh, in live ops so our audience knows what kind of questions uh, they can ask you during this meeting? Thank you, Julia. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I am in. Uh, in game development for more than 25 years. Uh, let's say first half of the period I spent uh, developing games, but they were not online games, uh, just for retail. So there were basically no live ops. But after that, uh, I participated in a few online projects. There was a browser game, there was a uh, client desktop game, but uh, they were MMO and uh, they were uh, such a need to, to operate it live, to uh, 
be in constant uh, contact with the players. So every such team developed its own internal tool to make this happen. And uh, as, as many projects I uh, was working on, the same uh, situation appeared. So uh, on my last um, game that I uh, was uh, involved in uh, Live Ops, it was um, in Thurs, uh, a game called Hero Wars, which uh, was uh, one of the top grossing uh, strategy RPG uh, that time. Uh, I spent two years there, uh, response, being responsible for live ops, um, and um, I had a team of 25 people um, working only on live ops. Uh, and uh, we had internal tools, and um, I, was, I was really curious why this tools are so clumsy, let's say. Um, and um, I, I knew on, on practice and my personal experience that uh, live ops um, is, is a huge part of um, game life cycle and that it, uh, it helps multiply revenue. Uh, when, when we when we did it uh, right way, uh, I'm proud of um, uh, we we could increase revenue like two times, maybe three times. Um, so after that, when I uh, when I met the founders of Balancey, I I immediately understood that this, uh, that will be a great hit. Uh, and uh, when I had the opportunity, I, I joined the, the, the company. So I'm happy to share my, my experience from, from the trenches. Uh, I've been wow. there many times. Uh, uh, as a target three. audience. I, I was sort of target audience all my life. So now, now I know why, why we have to do this, actually. Half a century in game development sounds like you're our chest of live ops treasures. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's actually uh, jump into business, into our session, uh, and let's look at the platform. Uh, throughout the session, uh, everyone, please feel free to use the chat, ask us questions, uh, and whether they are related to the Balancey platform or to live ops in general, uh, we will be happy to answer and help you. Uh, and without further ado, I'm happy to give the mic to Pavel. So, Pavel, over to you. Yes, I'm about to share the screen as well. Uh, please tell me once you see it. So during the first session, well, I'm going to show you the basics of balancing, uh, how it looks like, uh, what it can do, how you should work with it, and so on. And we'll uh, cover several examples. Uh, we'll imagine that you have a hybrid casual game, which is uh, monetized on the ads and some in-apps. I'll show you how to build several uh, different uh, ad configs, how to maybe test them, how to segment your audience, and then how to add an in-game shop to your game. So this is a, a dashboard of Balancey where you will have all the games uh, which you develop. Uh, if you want to make a new game, you just click on the create new game, uh, add a name, you can make an empty game, or you can use uh, our uh, example. I personally recommend to use this one. You can call it whatever you want. So uh, just to save you some time, I have made already the new project. Uh, I called it webinar. And let's start it from here. Let me show you uh, the whole navigation, how everything looks like. So at the top, you will see your game uh, and its settings. You can find the integration information here. You can add your team members to start working on your game together. You can add uh, templates or different packages uh, from Balancey or from your teammates here. Uh, in the control section, you will be able to add new platforms, new purchases, work on the localization, 
uh, and deploy all the changes which your team was working on recently. Uh, in the live op section, you will be able to run live operations such as game events, offers, uh, scripting, uh, do segmentation, A-B testing, overrides, push notification, everything like that. And uh, the last section, section is uh, about documents. Uh, you know every game is unique and it requires uh, unique uh, configs. And this is actually the place uh, where you can add your custom configurations. So it can be like items, budgets, uh, quests, enemies, uh, uh, achievements, whatever your game needs, uh, you can add new custom configs here. Uh, let me give you some examples how you can make new structures uh, uh, and new templates. You just need to start with the data structure section. Uh, let's make a add config. Uh, we make a new template and call it add config. Just create it. And now I need to specify several parameters which my add config will have. I'll add a name, which, which will be string. I also add uh, priority. In case several add conflicts will be active, I will choose one of them uh, based on the priority, basically. And I also add another field called condition. Conditions. Uh, we are going to use our built-in logic. Um, I can also change the display name for my own convenience. I usually like to use emojis. This is very helpful and uh, helps with navigation. Uh, you can see the new config appeared on the left in the navigation. Uh, now I can start adding my new configs. For example, I just created a new one. Let's call it default config. It will have priority 10. And we can set the condition. Let's say I want to serve this uh, config only for players who has level uh, less than 10. Uh, but as you, as you might notice, this config does nothing yet. Uh, it just appears for players who has level ten, or who has level level less than ten. Uh, now let's add some uh, additional data to that config. Uh, now we need to work on the placements. Basically, I make a new template and call it add placement. I'll make it abstract and make it component. Uh, later, you will be able to read what that means in the uh, documentation. Uh, but maybe from my example, it will be obvious as well. Uh, it will have just one parameter called enabled. Uh, that Boolean parameter will help me to turn on or off different ad placements uh, for different configurations. And uh, since now I have a abstract uh, base template, now I can make actual ad placements. Uh, for example, in my game, I want to show adds uh, in main menu. So let's make a new template and call it a placement uh, main menu. We need to inherit it from the abstract class at placement and add some extra parameters. For example, I want to add some cooldown. Uh, I just don't want to spam my players when they uh, appear to be in the main menu. So by default, let's show this uh, ad not more, not often than uh, once per minute. And let's make another placement for Wheel of Fortune. Imagine your game has a Wheel of Fortune and uh, players can spin the wheel to get some rewards several times a day. That will be this config is about. So we will have uh, also cooldown in case you don't want uh, players to sp use pin. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, to use this pin uh, very often. So I'll put cooldown one hour and add uh, additional parameter like max pins. So every day they will be able to spin, let's say three times by default. So now the last step is to add the placement to our original add config. So now in the add configs, we add a new parameter called placements, which will be the list of add placements. And that's it. 
Now we go back to the our add config. You see the new parameter appeared here, new column. Now we can add all the placements which we have created here. I'll add both of them uh, with default parameters, but now I can change them actually. Uh, let's say if I want to make a different configs for players who has reached level 10. So I just need to clone this one. So let's call it high level. Uh, let's increase priority as well and change the condition. We need to have greater or equal than 10 level. And uh, for players who spent so many time in the game, uh, we might feel more comfortable to decrease some cooldowns to show, let's say, uh, spins once per 30 minutes. And uh, we want to decrease this cooldown to 30 seconds, let's say. Let's spam them with some ads. And you, as you might notice, uh, there is a lot of information. And sometimes it might be very hard to read. And for that, uh, we have custom display format, which is very helpful in such cases. Uh, so let's find our Wheel of Fortune and turn on uh, this custom display format. I will remove some of the unnecessary data and some text I will substitute with emojis and max pin. So substitute with those eyes. Now, uh, another parameter, another template was uh, main menu. Yes, I will. I'm going to do the same here. Okay, save it. Now, if you go back, you see now everything is much more compact and much easier to read. And you can play with the custom format just uh, to adjust it for your own needs. Uh, so your uh, game designers, monetization managers will be able to work much more efficient. Uh, if uh, later you decide to turn on, turn off some configs, that's very easy to do. Just put export pulse. You see it even changed the color. So now, that config exists on the server, but it will not be available for the players at all, which is very convenient if you want to save some data for the future use. Uh, add config is one of the examples of custom configurations, but as I mentioned before, uh, you can store any data your game needs. It can be daily quests, it can be daily bonuses, it can be normal quests, it can be enemies with all the parameters such as uh, speed, uh, hit points, damage, and so on. Uh, look at it as a Lego constructor where you can build anything you want and then use it uh, in a very effective way in the game. And once the data is in balancey, you will be easily, you will be able to easily uh, change it on the fly, uh, A-B tested, segmented, and so on. Um, now, let me show you how you can segment uh, those con configs and serve uh, different configs to different segments of, of players. And before that, uh, let's take a look at the segmentation page. We have a lot of built-in segments for RFM analysis. Uh, so those are based on the amount of money players paid, uh, how often they pay, when was the last time they pay. It's very popular uh, way of segmenting customers. Uh, so that's why we have prepared it up front for you. And if you need new segments, you can easily add them. For example, uh, you might want to make segment, let's call it new users. Uh, it's up to you to define new users, what it means. Uh, you are going to use the same conditions as uh, you saw I was using in the add config. But for example, uh, for me, a uh, new user will be somebody who did not pass tutorial step number five, for example. Uh, you can also combine several segments and use them together. For example, you want to make... Uh, old non-players so players who are playing who are not new users and who did not yet pay and then you might target them with some campaigns uh, in this scenario they should be not in the segment new users first of all and they should be in the segment uh, non-payer this one Uh, as you can see, when I was uh, selecting uh, my user property uh, tutorial step, there was a huge list of different properties you could have used. 
Some of them we track automatically, uh, such as number of session, uh, play time, uh, money spent, and so on. But in most cases, it's not enough. And you might want to add your custom properties, which you want to track as well. For that, you need to open the profile section. And here you will see the custom profile, which I have created for my uh, webinar example. I track loose streak, win streak. Uh, for the level, I track how much time he spent on the specific level, the difficulty le of the level, its name. And if my game has boosters, uh, I can track the amount of boosters I'm uh, spending in this game. Of course, all this data have to be transferred uh, from the client to Balancey, uh, so we could track it. And once this data is here, then you will be able to use it in segmentation. For example, uh, let's uh, track uh, how many quests a player has completed so far. Quests completed. It will be integer value. And also let's track uh, uh, how many achievement scores I, I earned. Scores. Uh, as you can see, we also support a lot of different types. It could be simple types, it could be lists, it could be complex data types. But for now, it's I just need an in, in integer. So once I have this uh, user property, let me show you how you can uh, use it in the segmentation. So for example, you want to make a new segment and let's call it uh, engaged user. Engaged users. And for me, uh, engaged user will be somebody who has achievement scores. This is a user property I just created. Uh, more or equal than 100. Now let's go back to our add config. And uh, we might now want to create uh, another config for engaged users. So let's uh, remove this condition. And add the condition so the user has to be in the segment engaged users. And in this case, uh, I need to turn it on. Yes, uh, I'm going to serve different config uh, for my app config. But as you might notice, uh, you never know uh, which number works the best. And this is where A-B test comes in handy. Uh, let me show you uh, how it works. Um, first of all, uh, let me show you a very quick example how you can uh, create uh, A-B test. Uh, you just need to go to the A-B test section, uh, create a new A-B test. Uh, let's call it engaged users test. I'll, I'll leave just two groups. I will target 30% of all customers. Okay, the test uh, is live. Now I need to start using it. I need to go back to the add config and here in the condition I can specify that uh, this test, this uh, add config will be available for engaged users, but only for those users who are in engaged users test in the group A, for example. If you want to track uh, or do some kind of changes uh, in the in other group, you just clone this uh, add config and change the group. So now I have two different uh, settings for high level. Let's call it A, and this one will be C, control. So now I have two different add on fix uh, with, diff uh, with the same values, but I can change, for example, for some of them, I can turn off uh, a specific uh, add, uh, add placements. So now those users uh, who are in group A will not be able to spin the wheel. They will only be able to watch ads in the main menu. Uh, another way how to use uh, A-B testing uh, you need to open any uh, page in Balancey. Let's say I have the list of items in my game. And I'm not sure about, let's say, an icon. I have this VIP content, for example. I can easily start a new test. I will specify that I need to test the icon. I'll create a bit test and target, let's say, 100%. And, uh, okay, we'll let it be new users only. Now I want to change the icon. I will leave the control group with the same icon as uh, it was before, but for the new, I, I can choose one of the icons which I have uploaded before. 
or I can upload a new one right now. So I am changing the icon, creating a test. Okay, it's ready. Let's go back to a test section and you will see that the new test is created. Let's open it. You will see uh, here in the reference section what it does. So for this VIP content, uh, it's, uh, it's item name. Uh, I'm changing the icon for group A to the new badge, basically. On the same window, you will be able to preview the performance of your A-B test, and you will be able to compare uh, the medium values for sessions, playtime, RPU, RPPU, total revenue, and also daily distribution once the data comes. You will see the graphics here. And once you're satisfied with the results, uh, you can uh, finish collecting users. It will stop uh, test uh, from uh, acquiring new users into it. And uh, once you're satisfied uh, uh, with the results, uh, you can pick which group won. And then uh, balance will be, help you to automatically adjust the balance of the winning group for everybody, basically. You don't need to manually do this anymore. Um, now let me uh, tell you some slightly technical details about A-B testing, which you need to understand once you are uh, launching them. So first of all, important thing is uh, one user cannot participate at the same time into two different tests. There are some exceptions, uh, but I'll talk about them slightly later. So uh, you can see that I have two tests running right now. Uh, one of them is for 100% and another one is for uh, 30%. Uh, so uh, to give you some examples, let's change some numbers. So let's leave it 50% and 30%. Uh, it means that every user will have a 50% chance to join this test, the VIP content, 30% chance to join the engaged user test, and 20% chance to be left without any tests active. And that's applying only for new users, because you see the flag is here. If it's an old user who comes back to the game, he sees that there are two tests available, he will skip this one because he is not considered to be new anymore. So uh, he can only join this one, this test, engaged user test, uh, with a chance of 30%. So 70% of chance that he will not join any test. Uh, and the next question which you might be asking is, what if the sum of the percentage will be higher than 100%? What will happen? Uh, in this case, uh, we normalize the chances. So in this specific uh, scenario, if uh, the user is new, so he is eligible for both VIP content test and engaged user test, uh, we get in some 150%. We just normalize it. And as a result, a uh, user will definitely join one of the tests. Uh, but with 33% of chance, he will join the VIP content test, and with 66.6, .6, he will join the engaged user tests. And uh, since I mentioned in the beginning, there are some exceptions. So sometimes uh, you might want to launch some tests at the same time. Uh, when you create a new test, uh, you need to do is uh, to mark it as concurrent. Uh, if you mar mark it as concurrent, he will live in a basically separate life. Um, the tests uh, uh, which are non-concurrent, they do not take into consideration concurrent tests. So if uh, they start normalizing the chances, they don't even look at the concurrent tests. And uh, one user can participate into unlimited amount of concurrent tests at the same time. But and be careful with this uh, because some tests might interfere with the results of another test. And this is actually why the default behavior of Balancy uh, doesn't let uh, players to participate into several events at the same time. But if you are sure what you're doing, you can use this feature. Uh, it can help you. So now, since we did a lot of changes, uh, let's go uh, to the deploy section and let me show you what it does. Uh, in the deploy section, you can preview uh, what you have been changing. You see here, I just added three tests and I was playing with some chances. Uh, you can open detailed view. Uh, it will also show you not only live ops, but also other changes which I was making, such as changing the icons here uh, and adding some conditions. It's uh, like a small Git 
platform where you can see who did changes, when he did those changes, and what, what he changed exactly. And uh, once, you're, once you're satisfied with the results, you just deploy everything. Uh, our system will automatically double check the consistency of the data. So if you have a broken link, uh, which is a very common situation, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a bunch of items in the game and several quests uh, with some rewards and quests in rewards, they're giving items. And then one game designer decides this, ah, we don't need this item anymore and removes it. But you still have a quest or achievement, uh, which is supposed to give this test, this, this item, after the task is completed. But since the item does not exist anymore, you get a broken link. And for such cases, Balancey uh, helps a lot. He will automatically find all such places and uh, help you to fix them before this uh, build goes to the uh, players, making sure that they're not getting a broken build. Um, uh, when you work uh, with Balancey, you are using the same platform for all the platforms uh, your game works on. Uh, by default, uh, we support Google Play App Store, but uh, Amazon, Windows Store, and other stores uh, will be added uh, soon. Amazon actually already added. You can start using it. Uh, you should provide us with the license keys, package name, and password. Those, this data is used for uh, payments validation. If you have your own backends uh, payments validation, you can leave those uh, fields empty. But if you want to rely on our backend server payments validation, uh, feel free to use it. In the product section, uh, you can add uh, all the content, uh, all the products, SKUs, which you are planning to sell. This list you can import from Google or Apple admin panels. And uh, if uh, there are some differences uh, in the naming, let's say, uh, between Google Play and App Store, we support overrides. So you can change the names for different platforms for your convenience. And now, since we started talking about payments and switched from uh, ad monetization to the in-app purchases, let me show you uh, store items section. This is a place where you can collect all the uh, content which you plan to sell. And each record has a name, it has an icon, it has a price. The price can be in the hard currency, like in this example. It can be in soft currency, like in this example, I'm selling for 500 gems. Or the price can be in watching ads. So player needs to watch a rewarded ad uh, in order to get this reward. And you can easily change the pricing by clicking on the icon. And uh, you can choose one of the products which are uh, coming from the previous page I was just showing you. Uh, to define the price, uh, what uh, this item will cost. And in the reward section, uh, you will see uh, the list of items which uh, player will get once he purchases uh, this uh, store item. And if you need some extra parameters, feel free to add as many as you need. And then in the code, you can work with it in any way. Uh, for now, this is just uh, storage, I would say for the content which can be sold, but we need to actually sell it. Uh, there are two ways to sell it. One way is uh, through special offers, limit time offers, uh, daily deals, and so on. Uh, I'm not going to cover this in this topic, maybe the next seminar, uh, but the main source is to sell it from, through the shop. Uh, Balance has a built-in in-game shop uh, where you can specify what you're going to sell. So in, you can see here, I have a shop with four different pages. Uh, this is a welcome page with some content. I have bundles uh, with multiple of items. I have gold, which you can purchase via gems and gems, which can be purchased using hard currency uh, dollars actually. And uh, every element uh, can be changed uh, visually as well. You see that uh, here in the UI data, it's my custom parameter I have created. I specify it, uh, what kind of background I'm going to use, uh, what uh, color of the button uh, will be here. Uh, you can see all the content available here. Uh, you, you can see the background. You can see how the content will be overridden. You can see the, what uh, sprite I'm using for the button. And if I'm going to show the badge uh, and so on. Uh, one of the best uh, features of uh, the shop is that every content can be personalized here. Uh, you can, for example, uh, add some additional conditions 
if you want to sell this specific salt for specific segment of customers. This is absolutely the same condition system which you saw in all the previous places. It is being used everywhere. So for example, if I add the condition uh, killer whale, so only killer whales will be able to see this lot. Others will not be able to see it at all. And uh, you see that uh, I, I'm giving this free gold uh, with some period. I give it uh, once per eight hours. Uh, which is fine, uh, but for the gold for ad, there are no limitations. So players can watch ads nonstop, basically. That might ruin your economy. And uh, if you decide to test it, uh, let's do this from here. Uh, let's make a new test. Actually, I have a new test. Let's just do this. Let's call it ad. Uh, watch, watch ads test. I'll just rename it and go back to the store. I'm going to clone this uh, gold for add. And uh, in the first one, I will add additional logic. I will add, uh, let's say, cooldown. So you can watch it once per four hours. So if you watch it to get some gold, so it will be blocked for the next four hours. But I do not want to release it for everybody. I want to release this only for players who are in my A-B test, uh, the watch ads test in the group A. Uh, now you see this uh, question mark change its color. So now it has a, a green background just to show you that there are some additional conditions which you need to think about. And uh, just to avoid the situation when both of them are visible for some players, I need to do uh, a reverse condition here. So uh, players who has no who have no uh, limitations here should be not in the A B test, the same A B test, the same group A. Uh, I could have used uh, comparing to the control group, but the problem with that would be that there are some players who are not in either group A or control group. So uh, defining condition with not uh, in uh, group A, making sure that uh, this uh, segment, I will include both players who are in the control group and uh, players who are not in the, this test at all. That's why I did this way. So now you can launch uh, your shop and your shop will look differently uh, depending on in which group this uh, player landed. And uh, just to show you some uh, interactions, uh, I have prepared the demo project. You can see this is a shop, uh, which is uh, very similar to what I was just showing you recently. And uh, here in my demo, I can start operating it. So you see, I have no ads pack, free gold and gold for ads. So this is the same slots uh, available in the shop. So now let's change something. I can change the order. So I'll uh, sell for add on the first slot and the free gold will be sell, sold on the second slot. And at the same time, I might want to change the background to yellow, let's say. It also will change the button. Now let me deploy it. It will start validating processes. So let's switch it. Uh, so the validation is under the progress. Uh, uh, it's going to be released very soon. And I hope it will switch. Yes. So now you see in, uh, it works in real time. Uh, you can change not only the pricing, the order. You can also change the colors, uh, the sizes, uh, the background, the images, everything. Uh, you can add additional budgets like, uh, such as here, free. Uh, some additional uh, visual uh, things which could attract uh, attention. So you can add, for example, budgets like in this example i could add the batch uh, here like new so uh it will be displayed for the in the shop so players will be able to see that it's, it's something new which they can test uh and besides of the shop uh as i mentioned before uh you can also start selling your content using our offer system uh, we support a lot of different offers, like single offers, group offers, chain deals, and so on. You can sell them directly by scheduling, 
uh, you can sell them uh, using different uh, triggers. So for example, if player reaches a specific level or do some action stuff like that. And you can also implement a very complicated logic using our visual scripting. But all of that I'm planning to show you in the next webinar. So I think uh, for this webinar, I covered already a lot. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. I hope all this time I was not talking to myself and it was during the session, right? Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you, Pavel. Thank you, Pavel. I'm returning myself to, to the screen. Uh, so yeah, you've showed quite a lot of uh, functionality of Balancy panel. Uh, I just want to let everyone know that, to be honest, to show all use cases, we would need like, I don't know, 10 hours probably. And uh, yeah, this is a good point that we need to make more webinars, uh, more webinars focused on special offers on the game shop on monetization tactics. Uh, but in today's session, we wanted to show you how to start working with the platform, how to upload the game content, create configs, and uh, run the tests with the platform. And uh, obviously, we've seen how easy it is to navigate uh, these things in Balancey, how easy it is to make changes to the game remotely and deploy it right here from the Balancey panel. But I'm curious, this is a question more to Mike, uh, since he be, has been working uh, in big studios and knows the processes uh, firsthand from inside of the studios. Uh, so, Mike, how does this processes, how does these things usually look like in other teams even successful teams like is it all that neat and easy just click and deploy or is it more complicated uh, i would say it's not such easy uh, in most cases uh, quite often uh, when you are dealing with uh, some visuals let's say colors or backgrounds or even texts, uh, you uh, incorporate them into your build of the game. And uh, when you change the build, to, uh, build uh, you have to deliver it to your users. And um, it takes time. Uh, it takes uh, time before you will even send this build for approval on the platform. Uh, because you have to test everything uh, with your QA uh, managers. And uh, after you send it for approval, you will wait until the uh, App Store or Google Play uh, will approve it. And uh, also, it doesn't mean that the player will uh, get it uh, in time, the, the new update, because updates are optional and uh, some users may even refuse to update the, the game uh, for quite a long time. And uh, this uh, actually doesn't allow you to, uh, to feel the, the power of uh, runtime live ops. Uh, and using the, the balance, you can just push the button. And uh, every user who is online right now in your game will get uh, update immediately, content update. Uh, and even if it's not uh, something that they, they could see, uh, like uh, in this case with uh, A-B testing, they, uh, they will uh, be able to participate in that immediately like uh, if you if you wish to run a b test right now like some urgency uh, you have uh, you can run this a b test in real time and uh, every next user who will open your game I can participate in AB test. So uh, I think the, the most crucial part of uh, using Balancey here is uh, ability to reach the players in real time. And uh, this actually might cost a lot for your team uh, 
uh, for, uh, because lots of people might be involved in the in the process of uh, uh, building new update. And uh, imagine uh, when you're using Balancey, uh, you will use tool that is already tested, and you can rely on it. Uh, and you, if you if you change, for example, some color of the button, <laughs> you you don't need to uh, run uh, the whole uh, list of uh, QA tests or checks, whatever you you have in your process in your team. Mm, you just push the button, and it works. So, I think they, this, these two things are almost the most, most crucial. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically, it streamlines the content delivery and opens the ground for experimentation, uh, yeah. all sort of experimentation regarding the game content, regarding the complexity of levels and uh, gameplay. In up to monetization, and the more you test, the more you iterate, the more you experiment on monetization. Um, you, from your experience, know Mike that usually it leads to growing LTV in the end. Like when, yeah, when... The, the the shorter uh, your life cycle of of any change you you can make, uh, the more changes you can make at the same time. Imagine uh, if you uh, if you could uh, like do one update in two weeks uh, and now you can make two updates per day it, it's a huge difference and a huge advantage uh, against your competitors mm, yeah updates and also i think personalization of the content is super important yes yes experiments and personalization stuff i i really love this uh conditional um uh, functionality in uh, in balance because you can actually you can uh, fine tune this uh, logic of conditional uh, selection of context for 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 users so deeply that you will address like one particular player if if this player uh, is has any unique uh, uh, parameters uh, for you. Maybe maybe the only one top player like pair on your game you can address them personally. Uh, this is the huge mm -hmm. advantage as well. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting actually to see that uh, even like industry leaders and the top grossing games like um, uh, I will not name the names here, uh, not often anyone, but it seems like not everyone has yet solved the puzzle of game content personalization um, because it seems to be not that easy. Uh, so, for example, I know uh, several stories of top games like where you make a purchase in the game shop and uh, then you enter the game shop back and you still see like very cheap offers uh, presented to the players instead of like showing them the upsell, showing them more expensive offers, showing them content that is related to their previous purchase or to their progress within the game, uh, this kind of personalization tactics. And this is actually where the LTV growth is hidden. Like uh, if a player buys a bundle for $100, it doesn't make sense probably to push them for their next purchase to be $1 or $2, right? Uh, it makes sense to, to upsell. And with the balance, see, like I like that Pavel showed this uh, section of the game store. Uh, where you can actually like personalize the display of the game shop for different players. So like the player who has purchased a lot of content before, they will be shown one kind of offers, maybe more like VIP stuff, maybe VIP page even within the game store. Um, whereas other players will get some free rewards uh, or like showing some discounted offers to actually make them convert into the first purchase. This is this is what I, what I like about Balancey personally. Uh, I'd like to give you another example, uh, actually, how costly it could, it could be to fix 
the simplest possible bug in the game. For example, if you have some hard-coded logic on your client uh, to uh, show player something, depending on his uh, status, for example, in um, uh, it, it's very um, it's very obvious case. For example, for um, hyper casual games, they uh, always uh, sell um, no ads uh, purchase. So, so you you buy the no ads option, and uh, all interstitial ads are disappear. Uh, but uh, imagine if you uh, you are selling this thing, and the what this is the only uh, one time purchase so uh, when user uh, purchases it uh, it shall disappear from the game shop and uh, imagine if uh, you you have some bug in this logic on the client and it doesn't disappear um, and it's obviously a bug and the player is disappointed uh, but since it's on the client, uh, the client has to be uh, rewritten, code uh, has to be changed, tested again, and the build must be sent for approval, and so on. And to fix the, the just the one line of code uh, might take you one week until it will be fixed for the end user. And this kind of logic uh, can be easily uh, made with balancing and to fix this bug you just need to push like two buttons and in one minute uh, the fix will be online uh, just imagine how much mm -hmm. money can you save or uh, audience you can uh, you will not disappoint with the quality of your product uh, this is awesome, Obviously. just awesome. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Uh, so, by the way, I want to turn uh, to the audience and say that, guys, if you have interest in particular topics, like, I don't know, special offers in Balancy or uh, Game Shop in Balancy or Visual Scripting in Balancy, you can write in the comments um, what kind of topics you want us to uh, show you in the next webinar and this will really help us to understand uh, what you expect uh, from Balancy, what are the use cases you want to implement. So please feel free to share. And we've been live for 54 minutes actually so uh, I think it's time to wrap it up if no one has anything else to, to add. That was my pleasure. Uh, I hope uh, we will keep running such webinars at least once per month because we can share a lot of educational content. And it's not only about uh, sharing how Balancy works, but also sharing some best practices, uh, some use cases, uh, maybe giving some advice to other developers uh, what th they could do to make more money or make their players happier. Yeah, a good teaser for the future. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you, Mike, for joining us, for sharing Thank your you knowledge. Everybody. Thank you. And yeah, everyone, have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.